Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark, your industry leader in this career game, the answer man. Hey, this final version, the final part four, is talking about how do you get promoted intentionally. I'm gonna break down the E for exposure. I got really, really something special for you on this one. I see you over there. Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark again, your industry leader in this career game, The Answer Man. Hey, this is part four. Now, if you have not looked at part one, two, and three, I'm asking you to stop this video, go back to part one, where it tells you the difference between just going to work, getting, your, getting raises and your bonuses, versus actually going to work specifically to do things to get promoted. That's one. Part two was breaking the piece of pie principle, which is the P for performance, that you have to go beyond performance now to get promoted. The third video was all around the image. You have to have a corporate professional image to be selected to go to the next level. So this one is all around part, uh, part four, which is exposure. Now, I have something special for you at the end of this video. It's called a, it's called a how do, you, how do you play this career game to win? If you play in this career game the old fashioned way, you will lose my friend. It's a three part series, but you would have to stay to the end to get it. I, I know you would like it. You would, all right. So this is part four, how to actually get promoted using a piece of pie. You, if you notice, I like to say that, a piece of pie. <laughs> right, so finally comes exposure, exposure excuse me, is 60% of the way there. If you don't do anything else, try to get, to, try to get exposed in, the, in your organization. Without exposure, you could be the best person in the world to work the best, have the high performance. Nobody performing no higher than you. And you can look the part, speak the part, be the part. But if nobody knows you, you're not going anywhere. You're gonna be at that job forever until you quit, period. So exposure is 60% of it. So it's all around who knows about you and what you do. Yeah, what you do, how you do it. Does your boss know what you do? Does your boss actually knows exactly what you do? Does your boss's boss know what you do? Do others inside your organization or outside your organization know exactly what you do? If they don't, I promise you, you will never, ever get promoted. Ever. Yeah. You will have to actually make it your mission to get exposed. So getting exposure is all around who has seen you in action. Who can speak on your behalf of what you have done, right? When you're not in the room, what does people say about you? Can somebody speak up for you when you're not in the room and they say, hey, this Darnell Clark dude, I don't know about him. Somebody has to step up and say, oh, no, 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 no. I work with him. He performs at a high level. I really like him. He really handles his, his whole situation great and I love the way he leads. Somebody has to stand up and say something positive about you. It's all around exposures. Who goes, who's going to be your sponsor at the table? See, exposure is the largest areas of focus on, on trying to get promotion is 60%. It's 60% of the pie. So what, the, so then uh, what is true exposure then? If I, if I need to get exposure, what is it? Part of it is, is having access to executive management, executive leadership. You know, if you had an individual contributor role, and it, it depends on how big your organization is and how flat your organization is, but say you are a individual contributor, you have a boss, your boss has a, a, a boss, which is a director, and, a, and your director reports to a general manager, VP, whatever, you got three or four levels, right? And most of the time, most of the time, as an individual contributor, you get to know your boss, maybe you might get to know or see your boss's boss, but you never go any, any further than that unless you actually make it your mission to do it. 
getting proper visibility for, for yourself and your work, having a positive sponsorship and trustworthy mentor and coaches and, and people who are eager and earning people to help you get to the next level and have confidence in you. Creating a one-on-one -on -one relationship of a mutual respect with a leadership and is committed, hear this, and is committed to help you succeed. Help you. You have to have somebody committed to help you. So let me give you two stories. The first time I understood this exposure stuff, I was working for IBM. I worked for IBM three separate times. The second time I came in IBM, I came in as a project manager uh, at a organization, as a team doing some stuff. But the Olympics was going on right now. They were a year from the Olympics, so they were doing a lot of test events. And I wanted the ability to go over there, but I couldn't get over there. And I had a manager who was a micromanager extraordinary. Oh my God, I, I hated working for him. He was treating me like I was a neophyte. I was in the organization, I was in the marketplace at least five years. He would tell me what to say, how to say it. He went all the way to the point where he would tell me how to leave voicemails, how to have my voice, my outgoing voicemail, what to say and how to say it. Man, I hated that. And I was just in the verge of getting myself ready to leave IBM because I couldn't work for him anymore. Then my wife, who was also working for IBM at the time, she was working and doing Olympic Games. They were one year before the Olympic Games and they were going through test events and they were doing horrible at it. Oh my God. They were doing such of a bad job that the city of Atlanta mayor was threatening them to kick them out and find another IT vendor for the Olympic Games for here in Atlanta. And so people were quitting left and right. Back then, IBM still had the work uh, full lifetime employment. They still wasn't laying people off back then. So for the position that I was looking at to do, her manager had talked to her and said, hey, 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 her name is Cecile. Hey, Cecile, your husband has some sport background. Ask him, does he want to come here and be the project manager over this organization? Right? And my wife said, man, he's not going to want to do that. I promise you he's not going to want to do that, man. People out here getting fired for the first time, quitting. So she said, he said, just ask him anyway. And so she came home and said, hey, my boss wants to know, are, are you interested in being a, a leader, a project manager of, uh, of the Olympic Games? I'm like, heck yeah. She said, you know that over the past three months, two people have quit and two people have gotten fired just for this position. I said, I don't care. I'll do it. Right. And so I went to that organization. I went as a project manager for the Olympic Games and I did well. I performed well. The exposure was at the highest level. The head man himself, I see him, Lou Gerstner and all his underlings. I was in, in, involved with all those guys. I was engaged with the highest level of CB of NBC, NBC Sports. I was engaged with the city of Atlanta, the governor, the mayor, the highest level of exposure. Woo wee! And when I performed well, IBM promoted me the day after. Yeah, they gave me all this money and all this responsibility and they promoted me. I realized if I want to get promoted, I can't do ordinary stuff. I got to go to the most difficult, hardest projects and initiatives for the organization. Yeah, I realized then, and every time I went and got another job, I wanted to know, have anybody ever done it before or is it something new? If somebody done it before and they were just trying to replace that person, that wasn't for me. I want a position that was never done before. And so that's the type of position I was going after. Never done before, we need to do something first time, and those were the only type of position I was going after. Yeah, all the time. That's why I was getting all that cash. Because I was doing things for the first time that the organization never done. So why, when I got to GE, when I got to GE, I thought, again, it was all about performance. Right? It, it's all about performance and nothing else. And then our organization wasn't making the money that it was supposed to make. 
and GE decided they're gonna downsize the whole division, 2,000 people. And my organization, 35, 40, 50 people, we caught, got caught in that. Had nothing to do with anybody's performance. We were rocking and rolling. We were performing at a high level, delivering, but our division wasn't making money. Our division was supposed to be making $45 million a year. We were only making 30, 35 million. Just cost. GE said, I'd rather not do anything than not make profit. And so they downsized our whole organization. So now, all right, Darnell, you got six months to find another job in GE. No problem. I'm a rock and roll. I know this thing well. So now I started going to my boss's boss level and my boss's level. So I'm a, I'm a director. My boss was a general manager, global, worldwide general manager. And I wanted to get to that level or just maybe get to the same level as a director. So I started going into the business and I started talking to these executives. And, then, and the first thing came out of my mind, Who's, who are you? Why are you calling me? <laughs> you know? Like, dude, you've been talking to me through email for months, a year or so. I'm the one who's been delivering all that. Who you think been delivering all that? Well, your boss, your boss's name, XYZ, is your boss was doing that. I'm like, who do you think was giving it to him? They said, well, shoot, man. I don't know. I thought he was doing it. I said, no, he wasn't doing it. I was doing it with my team. We were the execution arm of the organization. Everything that was delivered for your organization over these past two or three years came from me. He said, really? I didn't know that. He said, if that's the case, why well, I never heard your name? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> he said, why haven't you been in these executive meetings? Why well, have never seen your name on any documents? I said, every presentation you saw from this division coming from this dude came from me. I was the one creating all that. He said, your name was never on it. For the first time I realized, I'm like, wow, this exposure and the image thing is important. And so did I get a job? No, I didn't because nobody knew me. For the first time in my life, in my career, I recognized it's not about performance. It's almost has nothing to do with performance. It's all about exposure. They never saw who I was. Unlike IBM, when I was doing all this stuff with IBM, I was in front of everyone. They knew my name. They knew my face. They knew what I was doing. They knew what I was delivering. They knew everything. And so when the IBM uh, Olympic games were over. They promoted me and they sent me around the world. I lived in Europe and all that stuff, all this cool stuff, man. I was rocking and rolling for IBM. And then for GE, nobody knew, my, nobody knew my name. Nobody knew my face. Nobody knew anything. If you want to get promoted, you have to engage in exposure. They need to know you. They need to see your face. They need to know what you all about. You need to engage it. You need to purposely put yourself in the ability for exposure. Now, here's a video on review. We're coming to the end. I told you the difference between just going to work and doing your job and going home versus trying to actually get promoted. Listen, the first step of all accomplishments is desire. You got to have a desire to be able to get promoted. It's just not gonna happen just because. You gotta make it happen. And then I told you about the, the pie principle, the piece of pie, <laughs> right? The pie principle, the P, performance. is only 10%. The I for image, what image do they have? Do they think of you? That's only 30%. And the biggest piece of the pie is exposure. Get yourself in front of people so they can see who you truly are, what you're all about. And then I told you the difference. So let me give you the difference between a coach, a mentor, and a sponsor. You need them all. Now, as an individual contributor, all you need is a coach. A coach telling you what to do, how to do, because they're at another level. They can help you get to the next level. But if you want to get promoted, especially to senior leadership, you got to have a mentor. A mentor goes beyond on a coach. A coach will give you information. A mentor will actually help you, help, help you carve things up, track through it, break things down for you. Everything you need as a mentor. And a mentor could be in the organization 
or out the organization. A coach, you need to have it in the organization. A mentor could be in and out and they're gonna chop things up. They're gonna be with you for a while. Now, the ones who wanna go to the senior manager, director, general manager, VP level, you, my friend, need a sponsor. You need a sponsor. So when I got promoted with, to, G, uh, to IBM, from a project manager to a manager, and then a year or so later, I got to a higher level, that's because I had a sponsor. I remember the first time that my sponsor came to me and said, hey, I'm gonna uh, put your name into the pot to get you a higher level position, a director position. And uh, he asked, well, go to this person and this person is gonna help you craft your dossier. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> right? A dossier. A dossier was every information they need to know about you, including your spouse, including your children, everything they need. They, had, they said, hey, go to this place and, and take a professional headshot because that needs to go into your dossier. And when people start to understand and when they put yourself into the level of high senior leadership, they submit dossiers to each person so they can read through it. Man, it blew me away. Blew me away. So that was my sponsor. If you want to become a manager's manager, a director level or higher, you need a sponsor. And a sponsor will, are, is the one who will speak highly of you and make sure that you are in the right position to get promoted to the highest level. So there you go. Uh, a video review. I told you how to handle this piece of pie. Without it, you'll never get promoted. You never, ever. So if you like this video and all the videos from, the, from my four part series, hey, go to the like button, click on the like. Send this video to at least four or five people that's in the workplace now that, that's looking to get promoted. And as always, subscribe to my, my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, ask me your questions in the comment field. And as I told you before, go to my website right here and get your free three-part series called How to Play This Career Game to Win. You will love it. If you are playing this career game the old-fashioned way, I promise you, my friend, you will lose. So until next time, this is Darnell Clark, your industry leader in this career game, the answer man saying, hey, the way you get promoted is with a piece of pie. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye.